Hey everyone, today I want to show you a two-way piston bolt that I designed. And well, this one is a little unconventional because, well, two-way piston bolts usually don't really exist in a sense. You would rather just make two piston bolts side by side. And for this one, this is basically two piston bolts crammed onto a single lane, which is what makes it in turn two-way. There's also a blue ice rod on top and that is of course optional, but that is just there because I designed this for use on exploit. And well, not everyone likes piston bolts on exploit and generally blue ice boat roads or just ice roads are faster. So that is also an alternative to use. This two-way piston bolt is 26.67 blocks per second. That is unfortunately because you have to add extra delays over chunk borders, otherwise it would be 30 blocks per second. And apart from that, it's not too special of a piston bolt for better condition. Now the way I have it set up right now is that when you arrive at an end station, you are pushed onto a rail that is for the other direction. And of course, when you trigger this lever, you will get piston bolted can I say that? I don't know. You will get transported into the other direction. So if I flick this lever, I get translocated forward in the piston bolt. And of course, when I arrive at the end, I can do the same again. Now, in practical use, you would probably do something else, like you would make the minecart go into a cactus and then collect the minecart so that it is broken and stuff. But, well, in that case, I just want to go back and forth because it is kind of fun. Now let's just quickly go over the basics of piston bolts. So piston bolts are basically just the idea that you have a minecart clipping into the collision box of a piston via a curved rail and because it is inside that piston it will get moved forward and that is in general faster than just using a rail and that's why these are pretty useful. Now a standard piston bolt would look something like this. This is also the type of piston bolt you see in Java edition. And well, when these rails are curved like this, as you can see, it does get moved forward. However, in better condition, we can make slightly faster roads and they move the minecart three blocks instead of just two blocks. So as you can see, it goes from there to one, two, and three, instead of when we just had a normal piston it would be two blocks, so one, two. And yeah, that makes actually quite a big difference. In theory, it would be 30 blocks per second over 20 blocks per second, but because like I described before, you need to add extra delays over chunk borders, those types of designs end up being only 26.67 blocks per second. So in a way, piston balls are really just translocation for minecarts, and well, the player sitting in it, of course. We can also replicate that same translocation with other entities. So if we just spawn a creeper inside of here and then push this piston into the creeper, then the creeper's collision box will intersect with this piston. And if we extend this piston, as you can see, it goes up many more blocks than it should. Normally, nothing would really happen. It would just keep standing here. But because we have this type of translocation, then, well, it will just get pushed upwards. You can make elevators with this, by the way, it's nothing really new. But with piston bolts, they were actually broken for a while with the design I'm showing, and they recently started working again the way they are now. So basically, this type of piston bolt translocation stopped working for a while. I believe that was starting 1.14.20, which is an update that broke various entity mechanics. And this type of piston bolt translocation is something that was discovered by Maladjusted Platypus, by the way, which is a TechRock member. And well, it recently started working again in the 1.16 update. So yeah, the way my two-way piston bolt works is that it just skips over this rail that goes in the other direction and, well, it just ends up on this rail. And when it is going in the other direction, it will be on the rails facing the other way. So basically, whenever there's a cutoff end and it is facing in one direction, this is the direction that it will be going and the rail that it will be on. Here's another quote-unquote two-way piston bolts design. Now, this is technically, in my mind, two one-ways. And while this one is the same, I think this one would less qualify as a two-way piston bolt because, well, it is not even on a single lane. This is basically just two piston bolts side by side and they are using the piston of the other side to well save blocks I suppose. 
Well here it is still two piston boards technically, it is all on one lane so I would still call it a two way whereas this would be more like two one ways next to one another. This one by the way functions pretty much identically, it is 26.67 blocks per second and it is also one I designed although I noticed that a fellow exploit member called Obi also had one that is pretty much the same. The advantage of using this design over this design is that of course it is not as wide, so it is only 3 blocks in width, whereas this one is 5 blocks in width. However, with this one the wiring is a little more complicated, so you have to use 3 redstone lines, whereas with this one you only have to use 2. And yeah, so with the wiring being a little more complicated, you also have a added block of height needed, whereas this one is, well, one block shorter than the other. And like I mentioned before, you need extra delays over chunk borders. I use these pink terracotta blocks or magenta to mark where the extra delays are needed. So it is actually only two out of three chunk borders crossed where you need extra delays, hence the 26.67 blocks per second speed. You can add an extra delay either by having a repeater on two redstone ticks or adding two repeaters. So if you were to make a design that uses signal strength to carry on well signal to make some sort of turn, then you can also use two comparators at chunk borders. Speaking of which, you can technically make turns with piston bolts because you can actually translocate these minecarts through other pistons. And based on signal strength, you can then make subtraction and then make turns. So let's just demonstrate this quickly. So you could translocate it over there, and of course you could just keep it going straight but you could also translocate it over there. And then when there's a piston right over here, let's do that again, you can actually choose the direction in which it goes. And the piston will not block the minecart from going through. So if you push it that way, it will go through, but you can also push it the other way and it will cross just fine. However, with this two-way design of mine, it is unfortunately close to impossible to make turns due to the way how the repeaters will be positioned, because unfortunately the size of the repeaters where you need to have a redstone dust to input well the signal strength to make the subtraction, it is not accessible because either you will have a torch which is needed to power the pistons, or you cannot have a support block to put the redstone dust on top. Swapping out the locations of the comparator and dust will not work because like I said there will be a torch next to it and that will not continue redirecting the signal even when you have a block right there and of course when the torch powers on that will be a problem because you don't really want the torch powering on and causing all sorts of problems. You could of course just add a second comparator and then always on the opposite side have another comparator inputting a signal like this, but that would in turn add even more delay and that in turn would significantly slow down the piston bolt which would of course not be preferable at all. This problem only applies to one direction by the way. If you want to go in the other direction, this is the direction where there have to be two redstone lines or well comparator lines I suppose, then you could pretty easily make some sort of turn, however it would still be kind of complicated and I don't see it being very practical. However, this is all only really referring to making turns based on signal strength and adding multiple stations to one piston bolt. You can of course still put a turn at the end of a piston bolt and technically you could even add a diagonal. However, I can imagine that it would be kind of hard to make a two-way diagonal that only uses a single lane although maybe you can split it into two lanes. Either way, there are a lot of options on how to keep going after the end of this straight piston bolt, that is two-way of course, but that is not something that I have worked on yet, and I will probably have to if we are going to use this one on exploit. If you are curious about other piston and rail formations to make a two-way piston bolt that uses one lane, don't worry, I already tried, this does not work unfortunately because there is this rail in front that is connected. And yeah, that is quite unfortunate because that would be quite a lot simpler. This is actually something I tried before doing this and I'm actually pretty surprised that this one works. 
I'm not going to make a tutorial on this for now, because obviously it is quite complicated, and adding the delays over the chunk borders is extra annoying, especially if you don't start the piston bolt right at the edge of a chunk border, which is something that we are going to do on the exploit server, but not everyone might, so I'm not going to deal with that. However, if you are curious to see how the rail curving works, it is pretty simple. You just start down the middle and then you go up the pistons and you basically just repeat this process and what you will end up with is the rails that are curving outwards and towards the pistons and that is exactly what you want. What you then do is remove these rails and the rails on top here and then you have your curved rails and it is actually very easy to curve which is surprising for this little complicated layout. As for the bottom wiring to power the pistons, it is basically one redstone line down the center and two redstone lines on the outside. And the one redstone line will power the one direction and the two other redstone lines down below will power the other direction. There are also other ways to wire this because actually it doesn't matter at all if those two extend at the same time. And yeah, it will basically work no matter in which direction you power it. So you could technically just have a system that powers all of the pistons either in this direction or in the other direction, and that wouldn't really matter. But this, in my opinion, is the least inconvenient design, and is also the probably most elegant one. Because you can also just cover up all of this like this, and you would have all the wiring hidden. Kairio from the exploit server also helped me with the redstone wiring and while it is not too complicated, it still is a contribution, so uh, yeah, there's that. And apart from that, I don't think there's much else to cover. You get the idea. I think it is a pretty nice invention. I haven't seen one like this before that uses a single lane. Only the one on the right of me, which is, well, one that uses two lanes. And yeah, I think it's pretty nice. Let me know what you think in the comments, and well, I will see you in the next video. Until then, well, bye.